Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how you go about balancing your central heating system because there are three things that we are trying to achieve when we balance a modern central heating system. Along with those three, I'll show you everything else that you should need to know regarding balancing your system. Now, the first reason for balancing your central heating system is to get it to heat up evenly all the way across so every radiator warms up all at the same time. Now, you may have a radiator upstairs which gets really, really hot and you've got one downstairs which is just kind of lukewarm and you want that one to be nice and hot as well. But balancing the system should sort that problem out so it all gets hot all at the same time. Now, the second reason for balancing our central heating system is since 2005, all new boilers fitted after that date should be high efficiency condensing boilers. And I'm not just talking about combination boilers here. I'm talking about boilers where you have a large hot water tank. Also, they will also be high efficiency condensing boilers. And it's really important to get the flow and the return temperature with as big a difference as possible. And that's going to make the boiler really way more efficient. And this also applies to older boilers, although we're not quite trying to get the same amount of differential between the flow and the return temperatures. Now, I think it's important that I also give you some technical information about balancing the central heating system. For instance, you may not know that if you have standard thermostatic radiator valves fitted on your radiators, that when you finish balancing the system and you turn those back down, that's just going to completely mess up all the good work you just done with balancing your system. So the heating industry has been working to combat that problem I just mentioned. So now you can get auto balancing thermostatic radiator valves. Of course, we've had our modulating gas valves in our boilers for a really long time. They change the amount of power that the boiler works at. And to make it a little bit more complicated, we now have automatic variable speed pumps. And if that wasn't complicated enough, we now have our smart controls. So we have smart thermostatic radiator valves where we can now control individual radiators with a touch of a button from our phones. I'll go through all those and how they affect balancing your system after I've shown you how to balance the system. And if you want to know what that Delta T is all about, then make sure that you stick around to the end of the video. So let's get straight on with it. So balancing our system. So here's our house. It doesn't matter whether you've got a bungalow, whether you've got a two story house with radiators downstairs and then radiators upstairs, or you've got a bigger house with three floors or four floors and you have radiators on those floors as well. And it doesn't matter where your boiler is. Let's just call this the boiler. So it could be downstairs like that, or it may be upstairs like that. And it doesn't matter if you've got a traditional system where maybe your ball is downstairs and you've got a hot water storage tank upstairs. Balancing your central heating system is still the same. Although if you do have a hot water tank, you should also be looking to balance that also. And I'll show you how we go about doing that after I've done the central heating. Now to balance our central heating system, we should have a really good understanding of what's going on in our system. So here's our boiler and our boiler is upstairs. Now, when we turn our heating on, a flame comes on inside the boiler that heats up the main heat exchanger and then a pump will pump the water around the main heat exchanger where it then comes out of the boiler nice and hot and the pump will continue to pump it around our central heating system. Now, the water will always take the shortest, easiest route. And if that is that it comes out of the boiler and it goes into the radiator, which is right next to the boiler like that. So there it is going into the radiator there and the hot water going in. Then it goes through the radiator, comes out the other side like that, where it then returns back to the boiler. So if it's easiest for the water to come out of the boiler and then go through this radiator here and then go back to the boiler again, then that's what's going to do. It's just going to whiz around that radiator and it's not going to want to go to this radiator way on down here. So this radiator may be really hot and this radiator down here may be just lukewarm. But what we really want to happen is the whole system to warm up evenly all the way across the system. So it all heats up all at the same time. And this will also make your boiler way more efficient so you use less gas and reduce that gas bill. So not only are we trying to balance our system so this radiator is the same temperature as this radiator, we're also trying to make our boiler more efficient by making the returning water much lower in temperature than when it left the boiler. So for instance, if the water is coming out of the boiler at 60 degrees, it then goes around our central heating system. And then when it comes back to the boiler, we want it to be ideally 20 degrees lower in temperature. So returning at 40 degrees, that is then going to make the boiler condense properly, which is then going to make it more efficient. And that's going to reduce your gas bill. So I've now drawn in all the flow and return pipes onto the radiators. And you can see they aren't always on the same side. 
So you can't take it that the flow will always be on the left because sometimes it's going to be on the right. So how do we go about balancing our system? Well, here's our radiator and at one end of the radiator, I have a thermostatic radiator valve. And then on the other end of the radiator, I have a lock shield valve. And it's a lock shield valve, which I'm going to adjust. So what we need to do is to stop the water from whizzing around this radiator here and then force it to go around the rest of the system. So it comes down here underneath the floor to this radiator way on down here. And we do this by adjusting the lock shield valve. So if your lock shield has got a screw on top, we would need to undo that and then take the cap off. And then I would use an adjustable spanner, not a pair of pliers. And then typically I would then close the valve completely. So close it all the way down till the valve stops and then I open a valve up by maybe just half a turn or a full turn. Then I'm just gonna pop the cap back on and just leave it there like that because I'm probably gonna need to adjust it again. So now the radiator, which is at closest to the boiler or closest to the pump, I've closed that lock shield down. So it's now only open by half a turn. And now I have to go around all the other radiators and adjust those as well. Now this is only a rough adjustment. I'll then go around them again when the central heating is running and adjust them more accurately. Now the next radiator along, I'm gonna adjust this one to maybe one and a half turns like that. And then I'm going to go around the whole system doing a similar thing. So the tower rail here, again, maybe one and a half turns for that one there as well. And then we come to this little radiator down here. Now this is all the way downstairs. So the pipe is a bit further away, but the radiator is a bit smaller. So maybe that still only needs about half a turn because it's only a small radiator. And then the next radiator here, maybe that's a bigger radiator. Maybe these down here are big double panels and they need more flow. So maybe two turns and again, maybe three turns for that one because it's bigger again. And then this one here, maybe four turns. Before you switch your heating on, if you've got thermostatic valves, you want to make sure that they are all fully open and not half closed because that will affect how the system balances. If you've not got thermostatic radiator valves and you have a wheel head instead, make sure that is fully open also. Now, the best time to balance your system is when the house is cold and your system is cold. So first thing in the morning is always good. Now I have this temperature measuring device and it means I can check these temperatures very accurately. In the ideal situation, we are looking to try and get between 20 and 11 degrees drop in temperature as the water goes through the central heating system. Now you can see on my display right here, it says that T1, that's the flow temperature, is 47.4 degrees. And T2, which is the water returning back to the boiler, is 37.1 degrees. So this radiator is losing 10 degrees of heat into the house. Ideally, that temperature difference should be more. So I'll close the lock shield just a little bit more. Now, obviously, you are not going to have a temperature measuring device like I have, but you don't need one. All you need to do is to feel the difference in temperature between your two pipes. Use the same hand, feel one pipe, then feel the other pipe. If you can't feel the difference in temperature between the two pipes, then the water is going through the radiator too fast and you want to go to the lock shield and just turn it down a little. And then we have to go around the entire system, just checking every radiator and adjusting the lock shield as the system warms up. Now make sure that you do check the pipe temperature and not the bottom of the radiator because we want to know what's going into the radiator and then what's coming out of the radiator. And that's the best way to do it. And then you want to wait a little while, then come back to the radiator and check it again. Like I said before, when you feel one pipe, it should be quite hot. And then when you feel the other pipe, it should be noticeably cooler. And if you can't feel a difference between the two pipes, you need to close the lock shield down a bit to re reduce the flow through the radiator. If when you check your radiator, you find it's just not hot enough, then you want to do the opposite and open a lock shield up. And on some radiators, you may find you have to open a lock shield nearly all the way open or even fully open to get a decent flow through the radiator. And that's absolutely fine. It just may be that that's what's needed to get that radiator to the correct temperature. And you can see that not all lock shield valves are the same because this one, I had to use a screwdriver to adjust it. Now, as your house heats up, it becomes harder to balance the system and it starts to become a little more difficult to tell the difference between temperature of the two pipes. So that's why we always want to balance the system when the radiators are cold and in particular, your house must be cold. So you can't do this on a summer's day. 
So to get the best results, you want to balance your system over several days. So you do it the first day till the system warms up and then you just leave it, come back the next day, do the same again and you just keep going around the system until you get flow and return temperature difference. And that way you're going to get your boiler working at its most efficient and you're going to save yourself some gas, which of course will then reduce your gas bill. Now balancing your central heating system is not an exact science. I'm trying to demonstrate to you a large temperature drop across a radiator. Now I am really struggling to try and get 11 degrees, let alone 20 degrees. You can see at the moment it actually says eight degrees. Now what's happening is the water is coming into my radiator here and because hot water is lighter than cold water, it rises up the radiator, it goes across the top of the radiator and then it drops down this side and goes out of the other valve. And it leaves this middle part of the radiator cool. And don't think the middle part of the radiator is cold because maybe it's got sludge in it because I've recently taken this radiator off and I've sprayed it up this sparkly grey and of course I've flushed it all out and now I've even fitted the smart thermostatic radiator valve. So what I'm trying to say is do not get hung up on trying to get 20 degrees drop across your system. You just may not be able to achieve it because there are so many factors in play which affect how your system will balance, how big your radiators are, how drafty your house is, whether you've got double panels, whether you've got old single panel style radiators, whether you've got a new boiler with a modulating gas valve in it, or even the newer boilers now which have got modulating pumps in, which also really affects how things operate. And don't forget your thermostatic radiator valves. They can completely change how your system balances. And now we have smart thermostatic radiator valves just to add to the mix. I hope you're understanding and enjoying my video so far. Before I show you why these thermostatic valves are messing up all your good work with your balancing, I'm gonna quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful at all, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on that subscribe if you like the video, click on the bell if you wanna receive a notification and of course, share the video with your friends. A big thank you to everyone who has thanked me by getting me a cup of coffee and leaving a donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Oh, and don't forget to check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. So why are our thermostatic radiator valves messing up the balancing of our system? You can see I've drawn some thermostats onto these four radiators and I've left this one here with just two lock shields on. So we just spent some time balancing our system and now this radiator is the same temperature as this one and the boiler has a nice flow and return temperature. So we've got 60 coming out of the boiler and we've got a good return somewhere between 50 and 40 degrees. And the balancing of the system is now working really well. Now we have our thermostatic radiator valves, and as you know, they will turn the radiators on and off. Let's just say these two radiators here turn themselves off. So there we go, both radiators have been turned off by the thermostat. But the pump, which is in this boiler, doesn't know that. And it doesn't matter whether the pump is outside the boiler, so maybe it's just here under the boiler, or maybe it's in the airing cupboard upstairs or something. It still won't know that these two radiators have turned themselves off and it will continue to pump at the same flow and pressure as it was before. So the water that was going through these two radiators is now gonna be going through these radiators. So the pressure on the lock shield has now almost doubled. So where we had a nice 11 degree drop across our radiator, now because the pressure has now doubled, that's gonna double our flow rate through our radiator, which then means we'll probably only get a five degree drop across our radiator. And of course that in turn will then mess up the return temperature going back to the boiler. So that's gonna be returning at a higher temperature. So now the boiler is not gonna be working as efficiently as it was before. So that's why your standard thermostatic radiator valves mess up your balancing of your system. So what's the answer to your thermostatic radiator valves messing up the balancing of your system? One answer would be to replace your old standard thermostatic radiator valves with auto balancing thermostatic radiator valves. And here's Drayton's auto balancing thermostatic radiator valves. These are a brand new product released August 2022. 
So these automatically keep the system balanced. So what we would do is we'd leave the lock shield fully open. So we'd wind that fully open and then we do all the balancing on the thermostatic radiator valve. So now when a thermostat turns itself off, so let's just say these two radiators again, they turn themselves off. Then these auto balancing thermostats will then recognize that the pressure has now increased and it will restrict the flow and keep the flow the same going through the radiator. So although the pump will stay pumping exactly the same as it was before, these new valves will keep the flow the same. So you maintain your 11 degree drop through your radiator. And of course, that's going to maintain the return temperature, which is going back to the boiler, keeping it working at its most efficient. Now, if you do have a radiator which has two lock shields on it, which may be being used as a bypass, then it's recommended to change that to an auto balancing valve, but set it as a lock shield valve. Now, like I said, these are a brand new product, but all the manufacturers are slowly coming out with them. If I've not already made a video, I will be making one very shortly all about these auto balancing thermostatic radiator valves. Right, moving on to gas valves and what part they play in balancing our system. If you have an older boiler that is a non-condensing boiler, then the flow and return temperatures, we're only looking for 11 degrees difference between the two pipes. So we don't want to get it any more than that, because if we do and we get the boiler condensing, it's going to rust away the boiler because they are not designed to condense. This cliff is from our old floor standard boiler where I replaced the gas valve. On all new boilers, you will have a modulating gas valve, which will change the amount of power the boiler is using, depending on what is required by the system. Now, after the central heating system has been balanced, you may find that the power for the central heating is set higher than is needed. So for instance, your boiler may be set for a maximum power output of 20 kilowatts for the central heating, but it could be adjusted down to 15 kilowatts. Now adjusting the central heating output is going to be different for every boiler. So you'll probably need to call a gas registered engineer to do this for you. Moving on to pumps. Now this is a Valiant Ecotec Plus 831 first edition. Now this has a standard pump in it. So when you put your central heating on, this pump would just run pumping the water around at a set pressure and flow. Now this is the brand new Valiant Ecotec Plus 832 and they've recently upgraded the pump. So now it has a auto speed regulating pump. So it will adjust its speed depending on what it thinks the system needs. Now when it comes to balancing, there's not much you can do with a pump that is in a boiler. It's just going to do the job it's been set to do. But if you do have a modulating pump in your boiler, it's going to try and keep the flow and return temperatures constant, even with thermostatic radiator valves turning on and off. If you have a traditional system where you have a pump outside the boiler and you're considering changing that for an automatic variable speed pump, I'd strongly advise you consult a heating engineer because the pump and the boiler can conflict with each other and give you problems. So just be aware of that. Now at the start of the video, I mentioned the Drayton Wiser Smart Control System. This enables you to control individual radiators or whole groups of radiators like your entire upstairs and then turn them on and off when you like or use a schedule. Now what I would say about that is that with the Drayton system, you can also use the Drayton auto balancing thermostatic bodies. You would need to buy this separately, but I do think it would be well worth doing. So what is this Delta T all about? Well, when I first started out, I became a heating engineer some 30 years ago, we didn't have high efficiency boilers. And then we used to work to a Delta T70. Now the 70 stands for the average temperature that our central heating would run at. We were also only trying to get 11 degrees difference between the flow and the return pipe. And typically the boiler would be running between 70 and 80 degrees. And then some 20 years ago, there was the introduction of the high efficiency condensing boiler. And then we changed to work into a Delta T60. So the average temperature of the central heating would be 60 degrees and our flow temperature would be somewhere around 70 degrees and our return temperature would be somewhere around 50 degrees because with the high efficiency boilers, we would then look at to try and get 20 degrees difference between the flow and the return temperature. Now, just recently that changed again, and we're now working to Delta T 50, 50 being the average temperature. So the flow temperature we should set on a boiler would be around about 60 degrees. And then we're looking for that 20 degree drop across our system. So then we get a 40 degrees returning back to the boiler. 
But if we can set that flow temperature even lower, we'll make our boilers even more efficient. A quick point, if you have a heat only boiler where you have that large hot water tank, then you can only set your flow temperature to around about 60 degrees because the boiler needs to be running at a higher temperature than your hot water tank is set to. So if you're looking to buy yourself a new radiator, you wanna look at the output of the radiator and then see what the Delta T number is. Because the output of the radiator is based on the Delta T number, the average temperature of your system. So if it's a thousand watt radiator and it's a Delta T of 50, the average temperature would be 50 degrees. So if you then run your system instead of being 50 degrees at 60 degrees, you then get more heat out of the radiator. So I hope that all makes sense about the Delta T. And finally, I said to you about balancing your hot water tank. Well, here's the hot water tank up in the area cupboard. We've got our mid position valve there and pump. Now going into the cylinder on the side here, we have the flow pipe which goes in, which heats up the cylinder. And then down underneath here, we have the return pipe coming out of the cylinder. And then down below here, there is a gate valve. Now the gate valve hasn't got a handle on it because we don't want these being accidentally turned and changed. Now you want to adjust these when your hot water tank is cold and you turn your boiler on just heating up the hot water and then you want to feel the flow and return pipes and again notice a difference between the two pipes but like i said this is when the tank is cold because as the hot water tank heats up the difference between the flow and return is going to get less and there's nothing you can do about that when you finish adjusting it take the handle back off again so it doesn't accidentally get closed so I hope that all makes sense on balancing system. If you do have any questions, obviously you can leave it in the comments below. I think I've pretty much covered everything there is to know. It is pretty technical, but at the same time, it can be pretty straightforward. Any balancing you can do, even if it's a little bit rough, is gonna make a big difference on your system and reduce that gas bill. So that's about it then. So if you wanna watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends and as always my toolbox friend bye for now and i'll see you next time